Hey guys, we are going to do a little bit of a breakdown on some of the shop equipment. We're working on the car, the Chevelle, really hard right now, trying to get a lot done. But we're also, we got a lot of questions, a lot of comments about all the tools and equipment that have rounded up over the last 25 years of being here. This bridge port is one of my favorite pieces of equipment. I've had it for about 10, 15 years now at least. And uh, it's something that I use all the time. It has a digital readout on it. It is uh, three phase, just like most of the pieces of equipment that we have in the shop are all three phase. I don't have three phase power. This is a res residential uh, house and I don't have three phase power. So what I've done to convert all these pieces of equipment is use an old rotary phase converter, which is loud. So it's in the corner. I've insulated, I've isolated it and it's still, it, noisy and when you are using it you have to turn it on a three-phase rotary converter does not like not having a load on it so if it's just running by itself and a piece of it's not powering a piece of equipment it gets hot it makes noise it's super annoying so what we're gonna do now so these three pieces the pull max the lathe and the milling machine are all running on the five horsepower phase converter here, the rotary one. What we're gonna do is convert that. Now they've become affordable enough and I've played around with them enough with the other pieces of equipment. We're gonna convert this to a what, how many horsepower you think that is? That is a 10 horsepower VFD drive. What are some of the advantages of VFD drives? Well, a VFD drive is a phase converter for one, Single phase power goes into it, three phase power comes out of it, and then we can also use it as a speed controller as well. And uh, we are going to be able to adjust this on the fly because right now this is an old bridge port where if you want to change speeds, you have to change the belts, change the pulleys on it, and flip flop everything around. You only have so many speeds that you can do, you can't get in between gears. And to change that, you have to just screw around with uh, trying to get the thing to change speeds on it like that. You don't have to do that with a VFD drive. It is literally just like this. It's a touch of a button. You can bring the thing up or down. The speed control, it just controls the motor speed. And this one will also get me out of a jam on this lathe that we had worked on for quite a while. That's also going to help out with that. So all three pieces of equipment are going to be tied in together with that same VFD drive. I'm going to ditch the rotary phase converter. So you guys uh, stay tuned for all this and uh, show you how this all comes out. I think you guys are going to like this. It works phenomenal on the other piece of equipment we have. We are going to get this rear end done tonight, or close to it if possible. We still have our upper ears that we're going to tack on. They're just sitting uh, off to the side right now. And this rear end was a bare housing, and at one time it was welded together. So we're going to re-put everything together, but we are relocating everything pretty much because of our changed ride height. Our ride height is so much up, the rear end is up in the car to bring our ride height down. Bringing the suspension up in the car brings the body down. In order to get that body down that far, we changed all of our driveline angles pretty much. So we changed our lower link bars. We're moving our upper link bars. We shortened those up a little bit so we can get those down so they won't be at such a tough angle like this. So we're changing all that right now. We're gonna get it all mocked up in here. We have everything tacked into place so that way we can articulate it, we can bring it through its whole cycle, we can take some measurements, make sure everything is good to go before we weld it solid. So we had these brackets that we had made up. I have a plasma table at my house. We cut them out, but we didn't put the holes in because with a plasma table with a small hole like this, it's hard to get the right size. And when you go to drill it out, if you use the plasma table, it makes the edges really hard. So when you go to drill it, it actually just destroys your drill. So just leave the holes out if you want them to fit tight. Uh, so that's what we're doing right here is we're gonna drill the holes in them. So we're using the edge finder here. 
to come up and find the edge. So you can see how it has this little, uh, how it's not spinning concentric right now. You bring it up to the edge and it'll actually walk off to the side, just like that. So you back off until it is even, just like that. So there's your edge. You notice you're really close to it. So zero it out, lift it up, and then this is 200 thousandths wide. So we're gonna split that in half, move it over so it's right on the center. And on our uh, digital readout here, we'll set this right at 100. We'll re-zero it. Now the center of our tool here is right on the center of the, or right on the edge of the part. So that way when we put our hole in, our measurement will be from the center of the hole to the edge. We'll have to do the same thing on this side. Drop it back down. See how it walked away? And then we'll come over until it centers back up, just like that. Zero our DRO. Come back over, 100 out. We'll zero it. Now we're right on the edge of both sides. So now our zero is right here. So now we're gonna be half an inch from the edge. So we go in, half inch, and then we'll wanna be half inch from the bottom. Is what it was when we when it was drawn up. So right there will be our first hole. Now we're gonna move up to the rest. So we'll switch to the drill bit. The drill bit are we doing? 2164. So now, six holes in here. This is the last one, half inch apart. Got a little bit sharper drill bit now. That helps. So, we have one of these done, three more to go. Mocked it up on the car. We're gonna add two more holes. I don't really know exactly where we're gonna be, but it's better to have too many holes than not enough. So we're gonna drill eight holes, not six. That's probably the final number. Keep in mind, this is this is supposed to be a full bolt-on. I'm having a lot of parts for a full bolt on the car. But it'll be way cooler. So here's the eight hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're all set. Deburr these holes. So. Basically, these are for the shock mounts. So these are gonna, we're welding these onto the rear axle, and this is gonna give our coilover suspension adjustment. So we can dial in the ride height of the car. These are all half inch increments. And then obviously there's another one of these, another one of these. And that's how we control the ride height of our coilovers. 
Um, all right, rolling. Yep. We're gonna take off. We took out, put some temporary angle irons on here, just to hold the rear end centered up in our wheel well. So at, we took all the measurements to get the rear end squared up in the car, so it's not sitting like this or like this, and then centered in the wheel well. And we marked it, got our center line on here, and then we put a piece of angle iron and we just tacked them on on both sides just to hold it so we could get all our brackets tacked on because they sit at an angle and then our rear end could be in here like this or like this. And because we just did these frame rails out of sheet metal and uh, or 11 gauge material on both sides and they might not be exactly centered, we always go off the center line of the car in the center line of the rear end and then bring that measurement out to both sides so we made sure that the rear end is centered in the car and it's not crooked in the car in any way shape or form we tack these pieces of angle iron on there to hold it we're just going to take these off now with a light tack like that you can just grab a crescent wrench and just break them right off without having to cut them and now uh, we'll cut the other ones off and we're gonna cycle this thing up and down and See if it binds up anywhere. So it looks like we got a little interference problem with our shock uh, cross member, so we can move that back a little bit, and I think we'll clear then. There's uh, so it articulates, and it can articulate more. It's on the jack stand right now, so it's uh, it'll be able to articulate both directions, and that's what a triangulated four link's all about. It can articulate, let that rear end do this for differences in the road, and then it can also go up and down and your rear end moves, unlike an independent rear end, but it can still really hold the ground at the same time. So, sweet! Hey everyone, it's Jake, and unfortunately we had an issue with one of our GoPro cameras. We discovered that we have a week's worth of video with no sound, which included the outro for this video. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and if you really enjoy the content, make sure you hit that bell icon to get notifications on our latest videos.